Hi folks, welcome back to Game Geeks. I'm your host, Kurt Regal. Today's episode, we are reviewing two science fiction games using the Fate engine. Now, Fate is one of our classics. We reviewed it way back in Game Geeks Classic with my friend Isaias Acosta, and you're welcome to go back and take a look at that. You can go to gamegeeksrpg.com, and there's the episode guide there. It's way back toward the beginning in there. We were reviewing Spirit of the Century, and we were reviewing the Fate engine in general at that time. In fact, it's one of the few times that we've had a guest host in with me in Game Geeks, which you're probably thinking to yourself, he doesn't share his stage well, and you'd be right. But we have another guest host coming up soon, I hope, so we'll talk about that then. So today's products, though, are Diaspora, which is a hard science fiction role-playing game that uses the Fate Engine, and Bulldogs. And I almost feel like I need to go, Bulldogs, whenever I say this, because of that nice exclamation point there at the end. Now, I do need to say up front that I received this book as an Ennies judge, and I am reviewing it as such. So let's talk about what these two are. Let's start with Diaspora. This is a hard science fiction role-playing game. And whenever I hear hard science fiction, I roll my eyes because I'm a scientist. You know, I have, a, I have advanced degrees in science and engineering. I'm a professor. And whenever I hear something as, oh, hard science, and we stick to realistic physics in our background. Like, yeah, right. It's sci-fi. You got to have some rubber science in there someplace. They did a nice job on this one, folks. Like I said, I normally roll my eyes. But aside from a couple of, you, you have to have a little hand wavy stuff. Otherwise, it'd be really boring playing like moon colonists all the time, fighting vacuum leaks. This is a really cool game. What it does is it proposes that we've been out in space. We humans have been out in space for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. And societies have risen and fallen and the Federation has come and gone. And the Star Wars Republic has risen and collapsed more times than you can possibly count. Because let's face it, that's what Star Wars does. I mean, what's that Republic made out of? Balsa wood and tissue paper? But anyway... I, I digress. So this proposes that we've been out in space for a really long time. And what we've discovered is that certain sectors or certain systems are connected through a slipstream. That is the FTL that you use to get between system to system. And you can pretty much have as many systems as you have players. And one of the really sexy things about this is as you go through, what you do is you're, in addition to making your characters, which have your, what you come to expect from fate, aspects, stunts, refresh rate, you also build your systems as you go using the fate die mechanic where, you know, each player like, okay, Mike, roll yours. And he would roll in it. Well, mine is a garden world, but it's a couple of moons around a gas giant and it's connected to two other systems. And you end up building these really intricately interlaced star systems back and forth. And that explains how you go from point to point. So it's not a full, open, wide space opera like you get in Star Wars. You are in more limited scope. But at the same time, it's a broader canvas than you have in, say, something like Blue Planet or Dawning Star, both of which we reviewed earlier. Go back to the Game Geeks classic thing and you'll find them too on GameGeeksRPG.com. I get a dollar every time I say that. Anyway, so either way, this really builds from that. You also have different stress tracks that you have to keep up with. For example, there's, a, there's your standard physical harm, social, mental stress tracks. And as you gain stress, you can take consequences to remove them. If you ever get completely uh, a stress box filled out, you're taken out of that scene. Your ship has damage as well. It also has resistance to electronic countermeasures through a stress track. And you also have a heat stress track, sort of reminiscent of Battletech that way with heat sinks, where you can only really do so much on your ship at a time, given the amount of heat that each event generates. All right, out of that, so here's what you got. Hard sci-fi, build your system. Each game can really be its own. Really pretty cool. Then you've got Bulldogs. And in this, what this is, is, you know, as much as this is hard sci-fi, this is pure, unadulterated space opera, ladies and gentlemen. The concept here is that you sign on to this, this trans-galaxy pan-galactic corporation who doesn't give a crap about what your past is. Do you have an arrest record? Or you have warrants out for you? Meh, they don't care. You sign on for five years. They slap a bunch of you that don't know each other into this crappy freighter that's falling apart underneath you. They insure the heck out of you. And then they say, go! And then they shove you out into this expanse between two star regions 
that two star empires that were up until a couple hundred years ago at pretty nasty war with each other and your job is to sort of navigate around in there also uses fate so you've got aspects stunts this has a very active non-human character group for it so in this you also can play people that aren't really human and I'll give you an example. You've got the Arsubarians, who are really just humans with the serial numbers filed off. Or for those of you playing along at home, they sound a lot like Sebations from, you know, Farscape and stuff. You've got the Dolome. You've got a wide variety of different races to choose from, including robots. And these give you suggested aspects that come with each race. And on the flip side, they also give you racial abilities for lack of a better word that automatically takes some off your refresh rate so if you're playing one of the like there's like a feline warrior cast warrior species in this they're called the radialians i think i'm pronouncing that right if i'm not i'm really sorry the abilities that come with that is you have acute hearing you've got claws and fangs low light vision and this combat focus that gives you extra stress boxes for your damage Beyond that, it just assumes standard sci-fi tropes. I'm sorry, excuse me, standard space opera tropes where you're running around do, doing daring do, just trying to get your crap delivered. And if this sounds like Firefly by way of, say, Farscape or Star Wars, you're not too far off. Some of the basic concepts are there, but it's a very wide open universe for you to do what you want. Does the corporation you work for have sinister ulterior motives? Maybe it's up to your GM. Does the corporation you work for have benevolent motives? <laughs> what game are you playing? But maybe it's up to your GM. If you really wanted to, this could be used to do something Traveler-esque or Star Trek-esque. This, on the other hand, could be used for Firefly. It could be used for Star Wars. Or as I'm reading this, I'm going... This is Farscape. This is Farscape. Oh my God, I could do Farscape with this. I could finally do Farscape with this. Which makes me very excited, as you're probably being able to tell. Now, because these are fate sci-fi games, these do invite comparison to Star Blazer's Adventures. Which was, to the best of my knowledge, really the first, one of the first, if not the first, sci-fi fate applications. And, as you can also tell, it's really, really big. What's the difference between the two? Well, for one thing, this has a pre-built setting that comes along with it. Now, granted, it's a, it's a setting and a property that at least I never heard of, and my guess is a lot of people here in the States hadn't heard of either. This is, to be honest with you, a much broader toolkit. There's all sorts of stuff you can do in this that it's a lot more detail and it's a lot more focused than, say, what you get in this for space opera or this for the hard sci-fi setting. They really each bring something different to your table. So you've got diaspora, and for those of you who are about to type on, he's mispronouncing it, it's, I'm really sorry, I've never known to say that word. You've got diaspora for all of your hard science fiction role-playing needs, and you've got bulldogs for those of you who want to go and just slap an empire around and save a princess and shoot some pirates and have your leviathan starburst away and you can't possibly go wrong for game geeks i'm your host kurt weagle good day and good gaming